leadership in, in such a nice place. Can we thank you, thank you. We thank you, God. Um, but basically today I'm going to be doing our wow. Um, and, and I'm just going to lead us through a quick five minutes um, and just run us through our wow. And today I just need to be very, very quick. Um, but I just wanted to speak to two groups of people, two groups of people today. Um, and the groups I, I want to address, I, I've been part of both, and I, I, it's very likely that we've been part of one of them. Um, and the first group I want to speak to is I want to speak to those who, who walk with a swagger. I want to speak to those who walk with a swagger. And those who walk with a swagger have already disqualified themselves. In your head, you've probably disqualified yourself from being one who walks with swagger. So I'm just going to requalify you by, by giving you a through, like, like running you through some characteristics. Those who walk with a swagger think they're humble. Those who walk with a swagger, they don't accept constructive criticism. They don't want to. They always want to be the center of attention. Um, they are. They are critical to them that do better than them. Um, and and I've seen this recently, so I think I just really want to mention it. Those who walk with a swagger, when getting more knowledge about God and growing in theology, they they allow themselves to to become fattened. And rather understand, rather than understanding that the beauty of theology is rather to understand how little you know about God and his incomprehensible nature, they rather get, get prideful and arrogant. So, so that's the people I'm talking about. Those who walk with a swagger are those that are arrogant. Um, so now we've kind of found that some of us are in this group. I just want to run us through a quick script. Is James 4, 13 to 16. And the scripture says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to that, this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes, all such boasting is evil. Okay, so this scripture is very, very funny, and it's attacking. It's very, very triggering for two reasons. One, James is telling us two things here, and the first thing he's telling us here is that we have no knowledge. He's telling us, and I think he's being generous, because he's telling us that we have no knowledge of what will happen tomorrow, but the truth is we have no knowledge of what will happen today. And the second thing he's telling us is that everything we do have knowledge about, if anything, we have no power over it. He's telling us that our life is nothing but a mist. So he's challenging those who walk with a swagger. And then, it, like, that's already triggering. And then when you com contrast it against our God, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, as Scripture says from the beginning to, to the end, it even triggers us more that those who walk with a swagger, there is no place for you. There must be a change. Okay, so I'm going to swiftly move on and address the next group. The next group of people I want to address um, are those who walk with a limp. Those who walk with a limp, those who people who think about the past constantly, negatively, and those people who live in chronic fear, those people who never forgive themselves, and so those people who are judgmental and critical of themselves so much to the point that they feel unworthy. And I want to talk to you, and I'm talking to myself here, and I want to do the same thing that I did to those who walk with us, so I can give you one scripture, and that scripture is Romans 5 verse 8. And that scripture, many of us know it, simply says, but God shows us his love for us in that while we were still sinners. And, and th there's so much to unpack in the scripture. But what I really want to get across, I think Spurgeon put so, uh, um, he's a known theologian, put so perfectly. And, and I'll just read it out to us. It says, those that say I am the worst in the world, Christ died for the worst in the world. Those that say I have no power to be better, Christ died for the powerless. Those who say my case condemns itself, I'm... Uh, like, I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Christ died for you. Those who, are, those who are hopeless, Christ died for the hopeless. And Christ didn't die for those who are just partly lost. Christ died for those who are fully lost. And that includes all of us. So if Christ died for the ungodly, then, then why, why do we create an excuse and, and not come to him? I want us to, to, I just want to leave us with this fact that we have no excuse but to come to him if we are ungodly because that's the point of salvation. It's the Easter story. Christ died for us. So I've, I think so far I've clarified that we shouldn't walk with a swagger. We shouldn't be prideful. We shouldn't be arrogant. But neither should we walk with a limp. We shouldn't condemn ourselves. So, so the, the, the question is, how do we walk? 
And, and I want to lead us to my favorite scripture, one of my favorite. I don't want to lie on stage. One of my favorite scriptures, which is in Isaiah 41, verse 14. And it's quite quick. It, it literally says, fear not, you worm, Jacob. Fear not, you worm, Jacob. And I think it totally represents um, the, the state we're meant to stand in. Fear not, because God's got you. God loves you. God is love. Christ died for you. You worm. Don't think of yourself too highly. And, and I think that scripture is so important and it's how, how we need to live. Um, and just to end off, I, I want to tell us that we need to walk with constant dependence of God and in knowledge of the gospel. We walk knowing that God is king over all. He's king over death. He's king over sin. He's king over my life. He's king over your life. We walk in knowledge of the gospel and in the representation, which is a representation of God's love for us and of the fact that he will never leave us. And, and that's how we walk. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you.